Welcome to the Intimate Marriage Podcast, where I teach educated, successful couples how to have incredible, passionate relationships so that you can stop compromising and start feeling fully alive in your relationship. I'm your host, Alexandra Stockwell, aka The Intimacy Doctor. I'm a physician and an intimate marriage expert. My husband and I have been married for 26 years. We have four children and full professional lives, and we've created an amazing relationship. I've also shown hundreds of couples how to do so as well. If you want to deepen your understanding of your own relationship and learn to access new heights of emotional, sensual, and erotic intimacy, you're in the right place. I will show you how. Now let's dive in. Welcome to the Intimate Marriage Podcast, Derek and Dr. Liz Aguirre. I really enjoy, I think you're the first guest that someone said you have to be on her podcast. And honestly, I'm the kind of person when someone says that I kind of back up like no one's bossing me around. But in fact, (laughs) it's totally true. I have to have the two of you on the podcast. So Dr. Liz is was a hospitalist for 10 years and transitioned out of clinical medicine. She continues to work in physical education and is passionate about helping others through speaking. Derek has a passion for Eastern philosophies and spirituality, which has been the basis for how he lives his life, something we're definitely going to get into. They've been married for 12 years, are parents to nine-year-old twin girls and a five-year-old boy. And in addition to just getting to know the two of you and hearing what you say, because I know you have an intentional, pleasure-filled, collaborative marriage, I actually come to this conversation with a very specific question for each one of you, which is not typical for me. But before I say my questions, let me just welcome you and hear your voices. So welcome, Liz. Ah, thank you. Thank you so much. We're actually really excited to be here because this is our first interview as a couple. And we really, really feel that um, our strength comes because we work so well together. And this is really our first opportunity to do something like this together. And it's really exciting for us. So thank you so much for having us. Yes. Thank you so much. It's, It's a pleasure to be here. So I'm really excited to answer some questions and to help whoever's listening out there. So, Okay. Well, we will definitely do that, but especially given that introduction, Liz, do the two of you have any particular intention or agenda that the two of you have for yourselves that you set coming into this conversation, either explicitly or implicitly? You know, I really didn't think of that consciously, but Uh, You know, one of the things that comes to mind and that is always in the back of my mind is the fact that when Derek and I got married, I was a very, very different person, like completely different from the person I am now. And I have evolved as a human being. And a, a great deal of that has been because of Derek and his support. And, um, it was completely unexpected, but the amazing thing for me is I wanted a change in my life and I didn't know how to cultivate that. And somehow Derek brought that out of me. And so I always think that we're a powerhouse and we have evolved together and we have seemed to gain this momentum because of what Derek has pulled out of me that I didn't even know was there. And at the beginning of our marriage, he used to say, babe, you're coming with me. And I never knew what that meant. And now it makes total sense to me. So you'll have to ask him about that because he, I I tell you, he, he said that all the time, but to me, I just feel like so much unity and peace and growth and momentum together. And that, that is kind of what I want to share with people is that possibility, that possibility of growth and how you can grow together as a couple and become powerful as a couple. And that's where I feel we are now. So, okay. There are so many things I want to say in response to that. And you're getting at, actually, I'm going to tell what my two questions are for each of you so that that both sets the framework for the three of us, but also for everyone listening. So one of the things that I didn't read in your bio 
is that Liz speaks about the importance of mindset and self-care to decrease burnout and live an abundant and fulfilling life. She credits Derek for her shift in perspective and realization of what is possible. And the thing I want to highlight in that is that there's a saying in personal growth, maybe it's familiar to the two of you. You can either be motivated by inspiration or desperation. And most self-respecting, especially high achieving people like to think that they are motivated by inspiration. It's because we choose such wonderful things and have vision that we move in the direction that we move in our lives. But the fact is that much more often people are moved by desperation. So someone will be burnt out and therefore change their life in all these fantastic ways. But fundamentally, the trigger was burnout or someone, I don't need to give examples, but that, just the fact is that when we're desperate, we get moving. When we're inspired, maybe we get moving. And so in your bio, Liz, crediting Derek for your shift in perspective and realization of what is possible, that to me smells of really shifting and moving because of inspiration. But before we... <laughs> what do you think it is, babe? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's just the, the, the personality that I am. I'm a very stable person. I have a very strong foundation. So it just, she could, I was a, just a good support system for her at that time. And it just, it kind of pulled her along. And I just, I always told you, I'm not, I'm not going to leave you. You, you know, you're coming with me no matter what. And I was just there, you know, I, 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 you know, I know other past relationships, you know, it's, it's, it's hard, you know, to be that support like that, but if you have a good, I always tell people it's a foundation that matters. If your foundation is strong, you look at a tree, you look, it can be swaying in the rain when you, when you look at the top of a tree, but when you look at its trunk, it's still, and it's strong, you know, that tree is not going to snap. So I always tell people it's a foundation that matters. That's why I was able to kind of stand strong. And when things kind of, when things are really stressful, so. And you know, what's funny. I feel, um, I feel like split. I feel like there was a lot of inspiration there, but I feel like there was desperation too, because mm. I think that the true shift came when I was in the midst of struggle and I was having a, tr I was having a hard time seeing past the struggle. And Derek used to tell me, babe, you always have a choice. It's always your choice. And I didn't believe that for a while. I had stopped believing that. I had stopped seeing the possibilities. And I actually had an aha moment this morning as I was doing some writing. And it made me realize my dad used to be my number one supporter. He was my cheerleader. He was my go-to person. And my dad passed away my fourth year of medical school. Mm. And now looking back, I can see that's when things changed. I no longer had that support. I no longer had that cheerleader. I no longer had that person to encourage me when I was struggling. And so for years, I was struggling all over again. And I did not make the connection until this morning that the shift, the change really happened when I had Derek helping me rebuild that foundation again and find that strength just at a fundamental level. I have lost that. My brain took over. It started bringing in the limiting beliefs and it started, I started really struggling, but I came full circle and I really believe, and I really credit that to Derek helping me see things in a different perspective. I do want to reiterate what you said about the desperation, inspiration, whereas, yeah, I might've had inspiration in that change. It was like, I agree with Liz that it's kind of half and half because the, the desperation would really put her out. Okay. What are you, what are you doing? I want to do what you're doing. You know, it's like, it was that final kick was the desperation. So it's kind of like, she was right. It's a little bit of bold actually. Okay. Well, I love that you're keeping it honest because people do like to think they're motivated by inspiration, but desperation can be our friend for sure. So will you give me some, a few specifics? I'd love to hear from you, Derek, about changes Liz made. Cause Liz began this conversation saying, I'm a completely different person. And I have no reason not to believe you, but give us a little flavor of the before and the after. Will you, Derek, with your observations? Yeah, sure. Uh, so <laughs> it's kind of funny. Liz was, so Liz is type A personality. She plans everything out, you know, 
And she's the type of person if it's off schedule or something, kind of, it, it just it, it just ruff, ruffles her, and she's stressed out and frustrated with you know whether it's traveling or whether we're just doing something in the city or something at home. But so she used to kind of react quickly, you know. Once she got in that, like I, we talked about it, it's, it's we say it's kind of like a fog, which means she's kind of she's not really there. She's kind of run run by her emotions, and it, it was just really hard for her to not get to that point. So as soon as something was off, she would just get frustrated, stressful right away. She, you know, she may, might take it out on us a little bit from time to time. But <laughs> what a nice man you are. Okay. Yeah, but I, I would just, <laughs> I would let her be at first. And then when she would calm down, I would kind of tell her what I wanted to say, you know, and, and one of the things that we touch upon and we try to teach other people is what I tell people all the time is, the breath is so powerful and I get eye rolls all the time because you know, with the breath, you know, I always used to tell Liz, you know, just breathe, you know, focus on your breath. And at first she's like, I don't, I don't want to focus on my breath. My you know? girl <laughs> words were, if you say that one more time, Derek, I really, I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. And that is how I truly felt. And now I find like we're teaching our kids that and our kids are reminding us it's so important to us now. Yeah. So over time, it's just she's it's just through awareness. It's subtle changes, daily changes. And now I'm kind of fast forwarding, you know, 10 years later. It's amazing to see her like you can see her get frustrated or stressed, like starting to brew. But she can catch herself quick right away. And she, she's more aware of, of what's going on and it, it doesn't get to that point anymore. And it's, it's, it's so strange to see that. I mean, I can't remember her getting like really in that state in, in maybe the last two years, like, and she's, she'll calm down and she can think logically, rationally. And it's just, it's an amazing, amazing shift in, in the power that she has through awareness of what's happening. And she catches it quickly now. So that's, that's one example I wanted to mention. But a specific example, we were just talking about this the other day because um, I'm, I'm just getting to where I have accepted who I am. I've accepted my journey. I've accepted the things that I'm not proud of, that I'm embarrassed of by mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my realities in life. And um, we're at that point where I'm now ready to tell my story and I'm speaking about it and I'm sharing about it. And uh, one of the funny things we were talking about was our honeymoon. So we went to Italy for our honeymoon. We were supposed to be there for 10 days. And I got so upset, so frustrated, and I could not get past it. I was exhausted because I was working really long hours. We ended up leaving Italy on day seven and coming home because I just couldn't handle it. My you emotion. couldn't handle how wonderful. I did it was. not see any of the wonderfulness. You couldn't handle how delicious the food was. Yeah. You couldn't no. handle the sunset and the sunrise. Exactly. It was only on the negative, you know, the the, the getting lost in Venice, and it, it was just focused on that, and that's kind of what. But I think that speaks volumes to my fog and the state of mind I was in. I could not handle things that did not go exactly the way they were going in my mind. When it didn't work out that way, when the reality was disconnected from my brain and what my brain thought it was, I just couldn't see past it. I couldn't get over it. And then fast forward, we were laughing about it because we went on a weekend getaway for our 12 year anniversary and everything went wrong. It froze in Texas. The pipes froze. We decided to stay in one of those dome tents. And so it was not the most conducive to a breeze in Texas. The hot tub froze. All the restaurants were closed because Texas <laughs> shuts down when it gets below 30 degrees. And we had the it best was a great weekend. time. <laughs> we had the best weekend. It was that shift in the, we just focused on, on the good stuff, you know, and, and it just, us being together and, and just laughing. And, you know, it was really we cool. We laughed about everything, like literally. And I couldn't do that. And sometimes I'm like, where's the old Liz? Like it's, it's crazy. She really is a different person. It's, it's, it's almost unbelievable to see that. So did you see that in her? Because the way Liz was, I know this isn't the whole story and this is a very simplistic statement, but like, it's hard to imagine you falling in love with that frenetic energy, given 
what you've described about yourself and your interest in Eastern philosophy and so forth. Like, can you say something about that? Um, so what's, what's the actual question? So is she, let me, let me translate for him. So she's saying it couldn't have been all bad. What did you see in me that attracted you to me? Because you have such a strong, strong foundation in Eastern philosophy oh, and yes. that flows with you. So this is completely opposite of that. What attracted you to me or what did you see in me? Yeah. Well, this is going to sound a, a little strange. Um, I've always been able to see people throughout my life. I can, I can literally stand next to somebody and I can know if they're a genuine person or if they're acting genuinely. I have, I have, I've always had a, 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 like a, almost like a sixth sense since I was younger, but I, could, I, I saw this. I can, I could see right through the, the, maybe the ego personality. I can see through that. And I just saw the love that she had. I mean, I, I know not, even though she was in those states from time to time, I could feel her love. Like I knew she loved me. There was no question about that. So when these instances happened, they would pop up. It was, it was fine. You know, it didn't, it, it, it didn't bother me. Like I'm human, you know, it's going to affect me. But at the same time, I just, I knew she loved me. So it wasn't, it, I just knew, that's why I would say you're coming with me. I know that you're going to evolve. And I just waited and I was patient. And now the, the person that I see now is the person I saw 12 years ago before we got married. Now it's just out more. It's just there more. So I can, I, so I guess that's, it. I don't know if I answered it correctly, but that's kind of what I wanted to say. It obviously did. And even if I didn't say so, we know it did because Liz is glowing and wiping away tears. What's arising in you, Liz? Um, <laughs> he has always seen my good. I've always had good intentions. I had a wall up because I had a very challenging childhood and my defense was always a wall. And he saw past that wall when nobody else did. And he helped me see the possibilities for myself. Like I knew what I wanted for myself and I just couldn't see them before. And so I knew what I didn't want. I didn't want to go grow up. I didn't want my kids to grow up in a family of fighting and yelling. I wanted peace and I wanted love. And he was able to pull all of that out and just, create something beautiful with me when I didn't know how to express it. I, I had, I had a wall and I, it was my defense mechanism to protect myself. And I didn't know how to express love. He even has helped me learn how to love my family more, my brothers more, my mother more. And I didn't know how to express that before until Derek helped me not just feel it, but live it. And I didn't have that before. And so it brings up a lot of emotions for me because he saw my good in me when nobody else could. Yeah, you know, there are different ways of describing a phenomenon. It sounds like the language the two of you use is having a foundation in not particularly medical circles. People talk about having a stronger limbic system. I just qualified it that way because I don't know that a neurologist would agree with it. It's more of a <laughs> new age poetry rather than medicine. But anyway, in that context, it's called a stronger limbic system. I'm sure that all of the spiritual mystical traditions have their way of describing it. But in the simplest terms, when two people are together, what actually happens more commonly is that the person who is more anxious or more depressed or the kind of critical downer person that's the person who sets the culture for the relationship. And the person who's positive and more open-minded and open-hearted sort of succumbs or protects themselves from that. And what I'm hearing is that the two of you have created something so profound because the person with the more positive, open-minded, life-affirming attitude had the stronger presence. And then you create the culture and invite the other person to join you in that. Does that feel like a... That's, exa that's almost exactly... And that's what he meant by you're coming with me, babe. That's exactly it right there. Yeah. He meant, I see it in you. And he's not saying you are going to do this. He was just acknowledging that he could see it in me and that we would evolve into that. And 
he was the stronger one in that respect because because I did have a lot of love. I did have a lot to offer and egos do get activated, but I knew I didn't like that piece. I knew that that is not who I wanted to be. And one, I mean, God, there was something that you always used to say that oh, it came to me and I forgot it'll come to me again, but it was something you always used to tell me and it made sense in that moment. Oh, it'll come back to me. i it just left me. But. but you are right about the foundation too. It, it kind of takes that. That's why I, 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 when I help people, it's always about, you know, you have to have the foundation. You can't start up here. You start down here, just like a building. The foundation is dug into the ground, you know, and that's, that's what matters. So I've always, I've been fortunate enough in my life to, to been introduced to these Eastern philosophies from, you know, basically when I was a teenager and it's helped me deal with that, build a foundation within me. So so you're, I mean, you're exactly right. What you said, it's, it, it does, it is presence that pulls up, but that presence needs to be, you know, a certain strength too, because it is easier. And I, I'm not always strong all the time. I mean, I believe me, it's, it's hard and it takes work and, and I, I can get pulled back too. So, but it actually just came to me. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I don't want to lose it again. Derek taught me something very early on. When I would get in that fog and I was upset or I was frustrated, I never felt like I was taking it out on him. We, I, we never yelled at each other. We never got in fights. We didn't do that. And so I didn't understand. So I was like, I didn't yell at you. I didn't get mad at you. You're overreacting was my first thing. And what he taught me that was so powerful was, babe, I just want you to speak to me out of love. When you're angry, no, you're not yelling at me and you are not uh, fighting with me, but I'm not feeling loved in that moment. Mm. And that made sense to my brain. I'm not speaking to him out of love. I had an angry tone. I was frustrated. So I started learning to take a step back and step away from it until I could speak out of love. That made sense to me. When he said that, that changed a lot for me. Yeah, it's not what you say, it's how you say it that really matters. So. Yes, the way that I say that when I'm coaching couples is that it's essential to focus on the connection more than the content. Because when your focus is on the content, then yeah, the anger certainly rides on with, with on the words. That's true. That's amazing. And the thing that I was going to say earlier is building on your analogy of needing the foundation, I think the way we could talk about this is that many individuals and couples focus on the interior decorating first. And that looks good for a few minutes, but that's not going to matter when when there's a heavy rain or that's a right. tornado. Or North- no, exactly. So that's fantastic. Well, you know, the funny thing is too, like we're, we're doing a lot of talking and, and we're highlighting a lot of the struggles I had, but one of my strengths has always been communication. And that was Derek's weakness mm-hmm. when we first got married. Um, and when we were first dating, he would get silent. He would get quiet. And I didn't have awareness early on. And then he would bring it up like three or four days later because it was still hanging with him. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't remember that. And he's like, yes, remember you did this? And then I said that. And I was like, no, when was this? And he's like, remember when we were at this restaurant? And I was like, last week? <laughs> I was, I, that was mind blowing to me. And so I started- Because you had communicated and you felt complete. Right. And I hadn't actually- He hadn't- And I didn't know how to do that. That was something that she taught me and she kind of, she would bring it to my awareness. And I just, I've always been, a, you know, I, I like to be by myself. And since I was a kid, I, you know, I have obviously some friends in here, but, you know, I'm content with myself. So it was hard for me to, that, to develop that communication between another individual, especially through marriage is- I had to really step it up. And Liz was something, I mean, Liz helped me a lot on that. Um, and and the way I, I did it, and I I don't know how I figured this out, but at the end of every day, because Derek is not a liar either. He can't lie. So at the end of every day, I started asking him, babe, is there anything I said or did today that bothered you that you haven't shared with me? And by the end of the day, we were talking about it, literally everything. And I asked him that every 
single day. Do you still? I don't know because it's so natural. It's not necessary. No, mm -mm. the communication flows freely now. And um, even for me, I didn't know this, but the way I would speak to him, he was so, he was always so worried about my happiness and putting me first. I think he would do that at the expense of his own happiness. Yeah, and, sometimes, yeah. and so I, I wouldn't know. I, I really didn't know until I started asking these questions and um, I started making it my priority to make sure that he was feeling happy and he was feeling loved and that it all came together. Yeah. That's and, when it really, like when she started responding to me, um, it was amazing. I mean, I, I felt the, like just, not that I didn't feel free before, but I felt completely nothing holding me back anymore. Like I can just go full force of spirituality and investing and it was just this amazing feeling when she, it happened maybe a year and a half ago or around there. It was like a click because when she was on, when she was on board, that was it. I mean, that's when our life in the last year and a half, it is really just. Okay. So let's wait. I want to just like rewind a little bit. Say, will you say in your words exactly what the change was, Derek? Because I know you just said it, Liz, in your words, but will you say it in your words, Derek? I think it was, if I had to say it, it, the fact that she just completely let me do it, like just completely trust me, just, you know, she, her fear had just kind of left her. It's not that she was holding me back. It was her own fear that was holding me back. But since I'm the type of person that cared about her happiness, it kind of held me back too. But when that fear left and when she really blossomed and she wanted to, you know, she had an entrepreneur spirit and she wanted to be free it just, it kind of gave me that out as well. And I just, I felt complete non-resistance at that moment. Like I just felt the most free. And now the last year and a half, I just, I feel like I don't even have to ask her about things like I normally would have. Cause I was like, oh no, I'm, I'm completely free. Like she, she knows what the answer will be. I know what the answer will be. And it, uh, it's amazing. Like, so let, let's give an example, because I think this is, this is a, a powerful point. Derek has always done our investments and I have always told him, I don't know anything about the investments. I, I don't understand stocks and bonds and where to move our money and what proportions should go here. I know more now because we work together, but I didn't understand that before. And I was working a lot. So I used to tell him, babe, I trust whatever decisions you make because I just don't know. But he also knew that I worry about money a lot because I grew up poor. I worry about the stability of our retirement account and I worry about that. So on one hand, I was telling him that he could do whatever he wants. And on the other hand, I would express my worry or my concern about how our retirement accounts were doing. So there was that disconnect. But when I made the mental shift, when I stopped worrying about little things and he could feel that my fear had left, he no longer felt like I was looking at his actions and I was analyzing what he was doing. I had to tell doing. her all the time about each move I did or this or that. And now what I was saying and the way I was acting were matching. Before they weren't matching. I would tell him one thing, but I would still worry about, you know, had this expense coming in and that. I worried about that. And so there was disconnect. Once the two matched, he could feel it. Which he was could... work you did yourself in your own growth and journey with coaching or whatever, right? Right, right. And honestly, he's been my biggest coach. It's just the mindset shift finally happened. It finally, it's like I said, like my dad used to be that person. He used to be that cheerleader. He used to be the person who would make me believe it was possible. And I lost that. And for years, Derek was trying to remind me, trying to give me those gentle suggestions, trying to show me my potential. And I wasn't, I wasn't ready to hear it. And so then the real shift, I think, came at the end of 2018. I went to a Tony Robbins conference and I came home just like, babe, 
you don't understand. And he's like, no, I understand. <laughs> and every time I have those big aha moments, um, but you know, along those lines, at the beginning of our relationship, Derek was so deep. I used to tell him, okay, babe, this is important to you. So it's important to me, but five minutes, five minutes of this deep talk is all I can handle right now. And in time over the years, it grew and grew and grew until we're spending hours talking about this stuff. And it just makes sense. And so the shift, the click was in my mind and our snowball, how things are progressing and how we're growing is because I finally had that mental shift and now we're just rolling together. Yeah. It's it like lifted we're... my fear as well. Like her fear lifted, then it lifted any fear I had. And it just, that that's what created that feeling of just freedom. You know, I mean, we all have our, we still have our fears and, it, you know, we're human, but in this sense of our marriage and our connection. And when that lifted and we were both on board going in that same direction, it was just very powerful. It's kind of like how I saw it in my mind just now is like Derek and I are running side by side and we look over and just nod. And that means sprint to the finish line. And we both know it just by looking at each other. It's kind of that it's like, uh, we, we feel it off of each other. Now we feel it and it's different from saying it. And it's, it's different. I, I don't, I can't even explain it other than it's a feeling that we both feel now. And it's just, it's amazing. This is our snowball and it's amazing. So it's so beautiful to hear you talk because you're like the poster couple for how having a great marriage makes a difference in everything else that happens. You take risks, you have more discernment, like work benefits tremendously. And even though what we're talking about, honestly, I could talk with both of you for another four hours, which we're not going to do. I have my second question that I brought to the conversation that I really want to ask, because the first one was to you, Liz, that we've really been talking about. And the second one, I want to read something from Derek's bio. He continued once the two of you married and had children, I assume, he continued to work part-time as a retail pharmacist for many years before completely retiring to concentrate his efforts on his roles as a stay-at-home parent, investor, and chief financial officer for Liz's growing speaking business. He feels that his greatest purpose in life is to be the best father and husband. This mission has allowed Derek to fully embrace his supportive role to his wife and kids. First of all, that's a mic drop. I'm just going to read it again. He feels that his greatest purpose in life is to be the best father and husband. This mission has allowed him to fully embrace his supportive role to his wife and kids. Now, I would never describe you as effeminate or soft. I mean, soft in a beautiful way. But, it, but it, the point is, it's not that Liz is so dominating. And so you're lining up in the submissive role and being a full-time father. There's none of that energy. And in the culture at large, and even in the personal development culture, the thing that people say, I personally think it's so much more nuanced and complex, but the thing that people say is that a man needs purpose and he needs his work in the world to give him a sense of confidence and meaning so that he can bring that sensibility back to the relationship. So I want to just invite you to share whatever you're called to share, Derek, about how you come to embrace this mission, how you're a responsible modern provider who fully aligns with your roles as husband and father. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of a, it's a, a tough question to answer in a short amount of time, but it goes back to my childhood. I've, I've always wanted to, uh, to be a supporter. Like I, I'm the type of person that I'm happy when you stand on my back. And I, I love being that role. I love being in the back and, you know, I'm not out there speaking, but I love to be the support that you can come back to me and you can lean on me. And I, I, that's something that I've always I've always been. So when I, when it related to a husband and a father, that kind of comes out in that role. I love to be that support system for my kids. 
and my wife. And it just, it's just the most joyous feeling to me because I feel like the more I let that happen and the more I can really accept this role, it just brings more joy to my life. It, it, it's like almost like the more love you give into the universe, the more love will come back to you. And it's, I know people say that, but when you experience it, it's the most powerful, powerful thing. And it just, I, like I said, I've completely accepted that role and, and not necessarily accepted it. I, I've always wanted it that way. I remember going back to uh, being in college and I used to like, tell my friends, you know, I'm going to be a stay at home dad and, and I'm going to be a good one. And Amazing. Gonna, yeah. And they would, they would make fun of me They're like, whatever, girl, we all want to be a stay at home dad. Yeah. But you don't <laughs> understand. Like, I really want to be that. Like, I want to be that support system. And, and I love staying home with my kids and I love uh, Liz, you know, asking me for help in her business. And it's just something that, that brings joy to my life. And it's, it, it, it's just my personality, you know, and, and uh, I'm fortunate to have that everything aligned in my life. And I, I, I told Liz, the other day, I just, I, well, actually I, we were going over songs with my kids the other night. We always listen to songs before bedtime. And I, well, a song came on and I said, that's one of my favorite songs. And then my daughter, Ava said, everything's your favorite song. Why? <laughs> you said the other day, you about 16 different songs, your favorite song. But and I told her it's because I love life. I love where I'm at. This is where I put my focus on the last 20 years. And I'm there where I want to be. So whenever you, you, you want to be where, where that, where your purpose is and where you have wanted to be for so long and you're there, you, you just, you, you just take in life and it's amazing. And I just, I just love to be alive. And I, I try to teach my kids that every day. I tell them every time they wake up in the morning, you say, thank you that I'm still alive because we don't know when our last day is going to be. Nobody knows. But the fact that you woke up, there's about 50,000 people in the world that didn't wake up today. But you weren't one of them. You actually were one of those people that woke up. So you wait, when you wake up every morning, you say, I'm alive today. I'm alive. And if you keep saying that every day, your subconscious is going to start believing in that. And your joy is going to come. Because when you put that, that, that love into the universe, it's a real thing that it, it will come back to you tenfold. There are so many things that I wish I could say, and I won't for the sake of time, but Everything he said is absolutely spot on. Our five-year-old has taken that, um, I'm thankful I'm alive, to thank you, God, that we're not dead today. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, that's not what we said. <laughs> and uh, uh, But Derek taught me something so profound. And he would tell me this over and over again. And I couldn't see it when I was in the struggle of my, my long hours. He would tell me everything you need to be happy. You have right here, right now, babe. And now I can see that for years. I couldn't see it. And now I I truly see it. I feel it. I believe it. Everything. It's so true. Okay. Well, there are many men who love their wives, love their children and didn't grow up wanting to be a stay-at-home dad, and maybe they're not a stay-at-home dad. That's not the point. What would you say to someone to help them embrace these roles? I just coached a couple this morning. He, He chose everything every step of the way, and now he has a wife and children, and it doesn't feel like he chose it, even though technically he did. How does someone embrace it in the way that you're talking about? Well, it's, it really, it comes back to, you need to find out who you are. And the only person that can find out who you are is yourself. And the way to do that is really, I mean, I say this, it's really through meditation. And when when I say meditation, people are like, you know, that's where he's sitting cross-legged every day. Meditation can mean many things, but you have to, you have to kind of find out a way and everybody's a little different learning how to kind of relax their mind a little bit because the answers are always there. The mind tends to like, let's say you want something and you get it and then you're not happy. Once you have it, you say, well, that's not what I wanted. I want this. You go for the next thing and the next thing. And then you, it's not what you want because you're run too much by your thoughts. So if you learn to relax, calm down your thoughts and the best way I know is through meditation or contemplation as some people like to say, you can get in touch with yourself and it's almost like a feeling and you, you kind of, it drives you in that direction. 
and it's it's kind of very it's hard to explain in that sense and I, and I know some people might be like well how, how do I do that but it's really just getting centered getting organized and learning to finding a way to to, to just calm your mind a little bit and get in touch with yourself and figure out who you are. And that sometimes I can take some time and patience. And it's not an easy thing because a lot of times when we're by ourselves, our minds will automatically start racing. People don't like to be by themselves all the time, you know, or they don't like to just be alone doing nothing. They have to be doing something. So a lot of times that takes us away from figuring out who we are and really getting in touch of getting in touch with who we are, which is that deep fundamental energy. Um, yeah. I think that, you know, Derek has a hard time really fully knowing how to teach people these things. And this is one of the things that's been really powerful for us, because a lot of what I've learned and I speak about, because I've learned through Derek, but he was saying it in a language that I didn't quite understand. And when he said, finally says the thing that I understand that resonates, it opens up. So even though I'm not a man, I can tell you, I had a tough, like outer covering and what cracked it for me and what he's talking about right there was creating space. We're so busy. I need to do that. I have to do this. I have to do my job. I have to spend time with the kids. I have to go get groceries. I want to work out. I want to, when you stop and create the space to really figure it out is when the answers come. I have two canvases on my wall that I painted and they're profound things that Derek has taught me. Number one is a white canvas and it has two words, create space. Mm. And the second one is a decision that I wake up with every day. And he's taught me this today. I will create a joyful, peaceful, loving world. And when I am struggling and when I am feeling like a disconnect again, I go back to that. I'm like, I'm doing too much. And he'll tell me sometimes, babe, you're doing too much. You need to step back and take a break. You're right, I do. Mm. But I have him. I have that support. I have that reminder. For people who don't have that reminder, you have to put in a system in place. You have to create that that's going to remind you when, when you're struggling again. That's so important. I have that reminder. And in that space is kind of what I'm talking about. When you're, when you're meditating, you, learn to call, you, cre- you do create that space to figure out what it is you really want. So again, going back to say, when you figure out what it is that you really want and you take that time, and sometimes an answer might not come right away. It takes time. You go for that, you know, but you have to figure out, is it what you really want? You know, and you'll feel it when, when it's something you really want, you'll feel it. You go for that. So other other men out there that might be saying, home dads, it's not quite their fit. I would tell them to figure out what it is they really want and go for that. Because when they get what they really want, what is true to their, their heart, it will bring joy to the whole family and their wife. It will just it will just blossom. OK, that's fantastic. I have a question that I ask all of my guests. I feel like this entire conversation has been your respective answers to the question. So let's keep it more brief this time. But. I deeply believe that relationship is the ultimate vehicle for personal growth. So I'd love to know what you learned about yourself, Liz, as a result of being married to Derek. And I know you've been answering, but anything you want to add to that? Well, the only thing I'll add, the other thing I'll add is that I have learned that I have the ability to be present. I always struggled with that. I couldn't create the space that Derek is talking about. And when I, whenever he said, would say everything you need for happiness, you have right here, right now, I did, I couldn't see it because I wasn't sitting quietly with it. And I've learned that about myself. I learned, no, I don't just have a monkey brain and no, I don't have to be always, that's a story I used to tell myself, but now I know I have that ability. I just couldn't see it before. So being present is something that I've learned I'm capable of that I didn't know I could. That is amazing. I mean, the ultimate gift, really. Uh, Derek, what have you learned about yourself as a result of being married to Liz? I, 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 actually, I'm happy you asked me this question because the whole time I feel like Liz, oh, Derek taught me this, Derek taught me this. Well, she also taught me a lot about myself. Um, I mean, just just seeing me, just seeing who I am 
more, you know, and it's, I didn't know who I was completely before I met her. And she's kind of been like a mirror to, to work on myself even more. Um, there was lots of stuff that, that I, you know, I was, I didn't, I wasn't a good communicator. I didn't like confrontation. I kind of let things happen more than try to take action. She's helped me to be more assertive, you know, to be like, no, Derek, you're going to go up there and you're going to tell them and you're, and to be more confident. She's helped with my confidence. I didn't realize that I didn't have as much confidence before I met her. So my confidence has grown greatly. My, my listening ability is amazing before I was not a good listener, even though I thought I was, and most guys think they are. I was, oh, I'm a great listener. No, I wasn't. <laughs> she has helped me to be that, that a listener to, to really listen to your wife. And I, I remember I wrote a, um, a little journal entry it was about maybe five or six years ago. And I, and I said, you know what? It may, it may be longer than that, but it's the listening that really uh, might upset a wife and the non-listening basically. So I told myself in that journal entry, start listening, like really listen to your wife. Like what is it that she wants? So I started doing that and it was just amazing. Like I would do things and she was like, Oh, you did that already. Like, oh, okay. And, I, and it just, it's funny that even though I didn't want to at the time, and it, sometimes we're tired, we want to we come home from work or whatever, or we're tired, we don't want to do anything. You kind of just just muster enough energy to do something that they really wanted to, you to do or might be on a task or do this, and you do it without them asking because you listen and you know what they want. It's amazing the response you're going to get. Like, you'll feel that love, and it'll be worth every, you know, every action you take. So. She, she has taught me a lot and, and um, I'm really appreciative of her. It's just it's helped me to realize, realize who I real, who I am and, and what I can do uh, in this, in this life in the world. So. Yeah. You mentioned um, that, you know, a lot of men in this role, they, they're uh, maybe seen as, you know, I don't, I don't know how you word it, but uh, you know, just kind of submissive or how, I don't remember how you word it. Um, it was, very much the opposite for us. Like people would think that I wore the pants and I was the boss. And in reality, he asked for so little that anything he asked for, he got anything. But along those lines, I was like, no, I want you to be more assertive. I want this to go both ways. I, I won't be happy if you're not happy. And I had to pull that out of him. And he had to learn how to be more assertive, how to communicate, how to express. But he felt my love, too. He felt like he could do that. And it was a, it was a learning process. But we've both come so far. And again, I think the snowball we're experiencing now is just all these years of work that we yeah, put into in, it. In one direction. It was just... Powerful. Two energies and focus in one direction is exponentially powerful than just one, you know. So. And then the last thing I'll say is Derek is very much an introvert. And all these things he used to he used to tell me, I think I want to be a spiritual teacher. I want to be a teacher. I want to share people these. And we laugh about it now because we're like, who knew? Who knew that his teaching was going to get out through me? I was the last person in this world who believed this stuff, who understood it. And now his words are coming out of my mouth, his years of teaching I'm sharing. And it's been amazing. And it's been like, that's why I always cry. Like, I feel like I can't take complete credit. Yes. I'm up here speaking. Yes. The words are coming out of my mouth, but a lot I've learned from him. Okay. Amazing. And what an elegant segue as well. If someone wants to learn more of Derek's wisdom from you, as well as your own, Liz, <laughs> what's the best way to find you? We'll have your links in the show notes, but anything you want to say? Um, yeah, yeah. So um, I do post a lot on um, Instagram and Facebook at Liz Aguirre, MD. I also um, do speak at events at conferences. So if anybody's looking for a speaker, um, Really, I speak about mindset and helping people understand the opportunities that are right in front of them um, and learning to be the best version of yourself so that you are the best doctor, you are the best employee. And that I learned totally from Derek. But again, I'm living it. And um, lastly, 
we have a new podcast coming out. I say we, it's my voice, but Derek is uh, going to be joining me for some episodes. And it makes sense that the name is called Creating Clarity. And um, Derek, Derek has helped me a lot with that clarity. So Creating Clarity. And um, my website, if anybody's looking for speakers, is lizagarymd.com. Okay, fantastic. And everyone listening, by all means, go subscribe and enjoy. Yeah. Last thing. Um, I do have a weekly newsletter. I send out, remember I said, um, we constantly need those reminders. Well, my newsletter is that reminder for people who are following me, who want that help and that reinforcement. I send out a newsletter every week that is just kind of giving these nuggets that I've learned. So they can go to my website, lizagarymd.com forward slash newsletter and sign up for that as well. Okay. And that will be in the show notes. So thank you so much for opening the door to your well foundationed home and Uh so many good things. Thank you. And thank you for giving us this opportunity. Like it's our first time speaking together publicly and it just, it feels so good. I mean, it feels so good to share it. So thank you. for. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Intimate Marriage Podcast. If you're ready to deepen your relationship and create a truly intimate, delicious, and vibrant marriage, head over to alexandrastockwell.com and choose the program that's right for you.